While single page websites are becoming increasingly popular, it is more common that a website has multiple pages and therefore will need some navigation at the top. Now you may be creating your navigation manually or you may be using the menu widget that's built into Adobe Muse, but either way it's tough to make a complex navigation that is site-wide that is actually nice to look at or nice to navigate. So I'm going to show in this tutorial how to create an elaborate but graphically pleasing navigation bar like this one where the sub navigation pops out and we can fit a whole lot of stuff into a single navigation bar. I have a second example here where it drops down skinny instead of sharing one big box. Uh, I've also got sort of a contest wrapped into this one. Uh, I'll explain more toward the end, but essentially I would like you guys to try to create your own after following this tutorial, and uh, I want to see who can design the most beautiful uh, navigation bar, and I want to reward that person with the uh, icon mega pack that you've probably seen on museresources.com. Uh, the winner will get the most valuable vector version of that icon mega pack. Uh, so they don't have to pay 20 bucks for it. So let's get started. I'm going to show you my blank document here. I've created nothing so far, and I'm going to make it from scratch, semi-scratch, by going to the widgets library. Not the library, but the widgets library. You'll find that there's a panel called library, and there's a panel called widgets library. The widgets library has the widgets that are built into Adobe Muse, not the ones that you've created or downloaded from museresources.com as an example. Uh, so I'm going to want to look for compositions. I'm going to open that folder up and I'm looking for featured news. Not because it's the only way to do this, but featured news is the best starting point. And we're not really doing news, but a composition is a composition and this one, again, is a good starting point for what we're trying to accomplish. So here, just to talk about the parts of this, the whole thing will move as one, but if you click again inside of it, you'll find there are two parts. There are triggers over here which are sort of the main navigation buttons and then there are targets associated with each trigger which show us the information that goes along with the selected trigger so what we want to do is turn these triggers into our main navigation and we want the target area to be filled with the sub navigation so I'm gonna start by actually deleting a couple of these triggers which will automatically delete the targets that go along with them and I'm also going to click into this target on the right and I'm going to click again to select the text box that has a picture in it and I'm going to delete that as well so I've kinda of stripped it down I've just got a button here which is called the trigger and I've got a big box here which is called the target so I'm gonna start with this button uh, and there should be a little blue a circle to the top right of that that'll open up some settings here and I want to look at those real quick before I even get started to make sure we start off on the right foot now first of all this position option stacked versus scattered ignore lightbox it has nothing to do with what we're building here today uh, stacked will allow you to create our first example where all of the navigation shared the same size box they're, they're all sort of stacked on top of one another. Uh, they all shared one big wide box. And scattered was the second example that I showed you, uh, where each menu was in its own position, in its own narrow, tall, skinny kind of box. Uh, if you don't remember that, just rewind real quick, and you'll be able to see that there are two different styles demoed at the beginning. Again, stacked, that's the wide box where every navigation shares a space for its sub-navigation and then they're scattered where each one can be a little strip that drops down in different positions. So I'm gonna do stacked. Stacked's a little easier because I don't have to size each box separately. And show target needs to be on rollover. You don't want people to have to click on most navigations because they'll expect to be taken where they click. They won't expect more navigation to pop out when they click. If more navigation is going to pop out, it is commonplace for that to pop out when the mouse rolls over the main navigation and it pops out automatically. So on rollover is preferred over on click. And then hide target, this is very important too. Hide target needs to happen on rollout of trigger and target. That means when your mouse completely leaves the navigation, it will hide the sub navigation. If you just say on rollout, that means when you roll away from the main navigation bar at the top, it will hide the sub navigation. So the moment your cursor leaves the top buttons and goes to reach for a bottom button, the bottom buttons are going to disappear, which is a guaranteed way to piss people off. So don't do that. You want to do rollout of trigger and target both. And then transition fading, you got a few choices here, but to be honest, you don't 
because fading is the only one that allows you to hide the target on rollout of trigger and target. So you have to leave it on fading in order for this all to work. So stacked on rollover, on rollout, rollover or rollout rather of trigger and target both. And then transition must be set on fading. And transition speed, this is a personal preference thing, but I personally prefer it to be a little quicker, like 0.3. If you mouse over something and it slowly fades in, it just seems like the website has slow performance, which you don't want anyone thinking that about your website. So a little bit more brisk of a pace is, is better. It gives a better perception of, of performance on your web page. We don't want autoplay. We don't want anything happening automatically. We want people to roll over what they want and click on what they want. Nothing automatic and no shuffle. That has nothing to do with what we're what we're trying to accomplish here. But we do want hide all initially. That means don't show any of the sub navigation until someone rolls over the primary navigation. We don't want any, uh, any default choice to be shown on the screen before someone decides where they want to go. Uh, we want to keep the power in their hands. So hide all initially. Uh, everything will work the way you expect it to. It just won't show up until you mouse over. Uh, and then enable swipe. We don't want enable swipe. We don't really want people to be able to accidentally bump through navigation with their fingers on a mobile device. And then triggers on top, we can leave that turned on. Uh, but one thing I'm going to do right now that's just a temporary thing is down toward the bottom of these settings where it says show lightbox parts while editing. I'm going to turn that off. And what that really means is hide all of the targets. So we can just work on the triggers. And you'll see here that I've got the button, but I don't have the box that's associated with the button. So now I can just focus on designing these buttons just for the time being. So I'm going to take this trigger here and I'm going to scoot it up. I'm just going to put mine up here and just kind of nestle it in the corner for a moment. And I'm also going to click into it again to grab the text box because this is two separate parts. We have a text box here and we have sort of a containing box behind it. So I'm going to make this containing box smaller. Yours is going to be different than mine, but I'm just going to make mine 152 pixels wide, and I'm going to center up the text box inside it. I'm also going to make the text box a little bit wider, and I'm holding the Option key so that way it expands from the center outward because I had already centered it. Nice little trick there. Um, and then before I change the style of this, one thing that's really important and really annoying about Adobe Muse is when you select a trigger, Anytime you select a trigger, if I click away, click back, no matter how many times I move around and come back to a trigger, it switches to the active state to be edited, uh, which means I'm editing what this button looks like if this button is already selected by the person looking at my website, meaning their mouse is already on top of it or they've already selected it. Um, I don't want an active state in the first place because I'm designing these buttons to look the same whether your mouse is on them or whether it's not. And everyone will feel different about this. This is just a design decision. But I like to start by creating the normal states. And then later if I want a different active state for a button, I'll go back and add that different active state. So I'm going to delete the active state now. And I'm also going to delete the rollover state now. That may not seem like too annoying of a thing, but if I select the normal state to start editing it and I click away from it and come back, it's back to the active state. So just know that if you're trying to edit the normal state for a button, that you're going to have to look up here and switch it to normal uh, probably a hundred times. Probably uh, you'll most likely be sick to death of it by the time you're working on any long, uh, large scale project. So just be aware of that. I'm going to make this mistake. I'm going to forget to switch to the normal state as I'm navigating around. So um, I won't beat myself up too much considering that you guys, I'm sure, will make the same mistake. But no more finger pointing. Let's go ahead and style this text. I'm going to open up my text panel over here. Let me close widgets library. Open up text. And I'm just going to go with uh, Source Sans Pro Light, nice light font. And I'm going to center that up. And again, I'm looking up here to make sure I'm in the normal state so I don't uh, have to do this all over again for the normal state. Uh, it says lorem ipsum. I'm going to change that to home. I'm doing all caps here. You don't have to. Totally up to you. Creative decisions. Uh, you, you'll notice that by editing that text and confirming that I'm done, it switched back to the active state. So I'm going to trash that and go back to the normal state. So now that I'm back in the normal state, I can grab the background of the trigger and I'm going to go to fill and I've got some color swatches here. If you guys want some beautiful color swatches, go to museresources.com and uh, download the vintage super pack if you're into vintage colors like I am. 
and you'll be able to drop them right into your swatches by pulling them from your your library if you haven't watched the tutorial I'll put a, a link in the annotations right now uh, linking you guys to the color tutorial that I did it's absolutely vital information to be able to color and recolor things on the fly I'm also gonna get rid of the stroke around this box I don't want a border around this box so I'm just gonna set that to transparent and zero so that stroke is now gone so now I've got a button I've really got this button set up I've got my text centered up in a white box or rather white text in a brownish box and I'm ready to create my second one my third one my fourth one etc so you'll find a little plus sign next to this trigger you can click on that to make another one and I'm gonna select that trigger and scoot it over because I, I want to keep this gapless I don't want a gap between each one and I'm gonna hit the button again and again and again and now I've got five of them so I'm gonna go back to the second one and <laughs> look again it switched to the active state so I'm gonna go back to normal and I'm going to change the color of that one and I don't even remember what order I did these things in not that it matters too much but I'm gonna throw the colors in there for each one switch to active again see each time I go from one trigger to the next it switches back to active it can be a little bit frustrating go up here switch to normal again change my color again and the very last one switch to normal again switch the color again there we go so now I got my colors going on got a nice vintage palette going on and I've got my home text box in my first button but I have no other text boxes in the other button so I'm gonna do a little trick here that I'm fond of I'm going to hold option and drag that text box over and I'm gonna drop it and there's that gonna drag it and drop it holding option again drag and drop holding option again that's alt on the PC by the way if you guys are looking at your keyboard looking for option and not finding it you're probably not on a Mac so go ahead and hold the alt key instead when you're dragging and then home uh, I'm gonna put services the next one I'm gonna put hardware yours will obviously be different from mine you'll also probably be creating this on a master page and not on a regular page because you're most likely gonna want this repeated throughout your entire website and last I'll put support there we go so now I got my main top navigation right but don't forget each one of these triggers has a target associated with it which I hid those targets are not showing up right now but they they do exist so I'm gonna go back to the little blue circle with the uh, triangle in it and I'm gonna go back to my options and turn back on the show light box parts while editing that gives me my target area and I can now scale and position that however I want so I'm just gonna stretch this out to be the width of the top navigation make it a little bit bigger and what I'm looking at right now is the target for the last trigger that I clicked on which was home now if I'm not sure which one I'm on I'll want to go and click on the trigger again to make sure that I know which one I'm on because it's otherwise kind of hard to remember where you are uh, it's easy to remember where you are if you've color coded them which is what I'm going to do right now so I'm gonna start with home I have home selected I'm gonna go down to the target area and with the targets you don't have to worry about the normal versus active it's just gonna keep you on the normal state so I'll pick my color for this and I'll go to services and select the target choose my color for that I forgot which one that one yeah that's the right one go to the third one choose its target change the background color and then the fourth and fifth so this isn't too bad because this I don't have to worry about juggling the the state from normal to active to normal to active to etc etc so there we go I got my color set up for each one and now I don't have to remember which one I'm looking at now when I select the target or select the trigger and the target shows up it is the color of its respective trigger so I don't have to remember anything because if I have to remember things it's not gonna turn out good I forget absolutely everything in about five seconds so now that I have these areas set up to design in I can start doing the fun stuff the nav buttons are done and I can start putting in my sub navigation so what I've done, and if you guys have not done this already, I have installed the Icon Mega Pack from MuseResources.com. If you don't have this, I'm not sure how you're living without it, because I personally am completely dependent on these icons. It's 325 icons that you can download that go into Adobe Muse for only five bucks. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna look for something that fits in with support. I'm gonna go to Tools here. And again, if you don't have this on your sidebar, go to museresources.com and go get it. The Icon Mega Pack. 
All right, this triple gear thing looks good for support. So I'm going to drag that in there. And you'll notice that it turned this kind of cream color. That's because all these icons are built on a graphic style that automatically gets put in there when you drop an icon in for the first time. And I set that graphic style to be this color. If I want these to be a different color, I can just go to my graphic styles. And you'll notice you'll have a recolorable icon style just by dragging one in there. It's totally automatic. And I can change the color of it in the effects on the glow tab here. We got color and I'll switch it to just straight white. There we go. And I'll redefine this style with the little button down here that has two boxes and a swooshy arrow. I'm going to click that to redefine the style. And what I've effectively done is I've made it so that any icon that I drop on here now will match this icon. It will be the same color. And uh, this is just a tidbit from the recolor uh, tutorial. Again, I'll put an annotation at the bottom linking you guys to that. Super vital tutorial to be able to color and recolor things quickly and on the fly. So now all the icons I drag in are going to be the color that I want. It's going to match the rest of my design and I can go back and continue designing. Another thing that I have in here that's a free download from museresources.com, I have the flat outline button set. I'm going to drag one of those in there and I'm going to type in knowledge, if I can spell it, knowledge base. There we go. I'm going to option drag this to make another one and I'll call this user forum and I'll drag another one up here and I'll call this one user guides there we go so now I've got my support tab done and I can hyperlink these things up and that is really all there is to it I just have to do it over and over again for each tab until I'm happy so again I'm back to designing like a designer I don't have to think in terms of technical challenges or anything like that. I'm past the technical challenges and I've created these open spaces where I can now design how and where I want to. It's really nice to have that freedom back and uh, with these icons I mean it takes a matter of moments to build a pretty beautiful and complex navigation here. So home, let's see, I've got a house in here somewhere. Contact location, I've got some houses, some buildings, there we go, there's a nice little house. I'll drag that in there, automatically turns white I'll scale it, make it fit, and there we go. Then I can start building my buttons. If it looks a little jaggedy when you go to preview it in your browser, it'll smooth out because uh, Muse hasn't re-rendered the icon yet. So here's what it looks like in the browser. And if I hover over these things, you can see that the tabs load nice and quick. You can see that they fade in, so it looks nice and smooth. And you can also see that my cursor being on top of the sub-navigation keeps it on the screen, and when I move away, it fades away. So. Speaking of design, speaking of getting your freedom back, and speaking of these icons, uh, you'll find if you go to museresources.com, uh, there is no link to this contest. It's almost a secret contest because it's really just for my YouTube subscribers. Uh, I'll post it on the Facebook page too. But essentially what you're going to do is you'll click on the link that's in the description of this video, and you'll submit a link to me uh, showing what you've built in terms of beautiful navigation. And I'll pick uh, what I believe to be the most beautiful navigation submitted and I will send you a free icon mega pack uh, vector edition if you guys have taken a look at that if you go to museresources.com you'll find under graphics and libraries this icon mega pack and you'll see here that 325 high-res icons for Muse costs five dollars just for Muse and costs twenty dollars if you go all the way up to the vector edition which has vector graphics of each and every single icon. That's the one that you get for free if you win this design contest. So uh, go ahead and click the link in the description below. Submit your entries. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't already. It is uh, a requirement for the contest. So if you're interested in winning that contest, go ahead and subscribe now while you're here. And uh, I'll be posting the results next Monday. I believe that's the 17th. I'm not 100%. Yeah, yeah, that would be the 17th. So next Monday on the 17th, I will be announcing the winners on the Muse Resources Facebook page. And you'll be receiving an email if you win with a link to download your Icon Mega Pack. So um, happy submissions. Uh, do your best. Obviously, this is just to get everyone excited and, and to continue being creative with Adobe Muse. That's what this is all about. And I hope you guys design some really cool stuff. I'm excited to see what you come up with. So please subscribe. I'll see you guys soon.